So you want to use your iPad as a photo editing tool, but there are a lot of app options. Let's figure out which one makes sense for you. Now today we're going to be comparing a couple of different apps that you can use on the iPad to edit your photos. It's going to be Lightroom, Darkroom, and Pixelmator Photo. Now, there are a lot of other options, but why did I pick these three? Well, there are other photo editors like Photoshop and Affinity Photo that take a different approach. And for me, the layers maybe get a little bit in the way when you're trying to be convenient and quick on an iPad. And then there are apps like Snapseed, Visco, and even the Photos app directly on the iPad where you can do a lot of things, but it is pretty basic and you're not necessarily going to get the results that you're going to get out of something like the apps we're going to look at. But before we jump into that comparison, I've talked about this a couple of times on the channel, but why would you want to use an iPad in your photo editing workflow? For me, there's a couple of reasons. One, it's mobile. I can take this anywhere I wanna go, slide it in a bag, and just use this on the train. I can use this on a plane. I can use this as Superman apparently if I keep going, but I'm really not tied down to any one place and a desktop or anything like that to be able to edit those photos. And although it's not a desktop or laptop, it is a really powerful tool that you can get professional results. For me, the iPad has become my primary photo editing tool for all of my work, both personal and professional work. But for me, I've always used Adobe. I learned how to edit on Lightroom on a desktop. And so when I made the move to the iPad, it made sense for me to move to Lightroom, but I've never really explored the other options. And so that's what we're gonna do today. Now the four areas that I'm going to be rating these apps on are the user experience or interface of the app. How does it look? Can I find the tools? Second is the functionality. Are all of the different features that I'm used to and maybe want, are they present in those apps? Third is the workflow. Now, again, I have made a whole video on my workflow of using the iPad, but how do these other apps kind of insert into that? How does it modify my workflow? Does it make it simpler or harder to use? And lastly is the price. What is a cost? Am I able to save some money? Is it gonna cost me more? Is the value there for what these apps are charging? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a screen recording and edit the same photo in all three apps and talk about the different features in those categories to see what we think. All right, so now we're going to look at Darkroom and right off the bat, what I love about this is the user experience or just how minimal the entire interface is. The photo is really able to take up majority of the screen and even when you get into some of the settings like getting into the crop tools here, you can see the whole photo and it's taking up from top to bottom of the screen. Comparing that to the other apps, it really is great. The others have settings or bars of different things, options, both at the top and bottom of the screen and therefore the photo is not able to take up as much real estate. Now with Darkroom, it does come with some presets that are built in and they're pretty robust. They have a bunch of different styles and what's interesting is you can change how much of that preset is applied or the strength of that preset of being applied to your photo. So if you like that style, but maybe it's a little heavy handed, you can pull that back a little bit and then you can even go into the settings and tweak everything and if you end up editing a photo that you like, a style that you like, you can create your own preset. In here they call them filters, I believe, as opposed to Lightroom calling them presets. Going through the tools, they are mostly here. It has things like tone curves, although you can't place points on it wherever you want. You are stuck to kind of the, the points that they put them on, but you can tweak those as much as you want. Then looking at the basic panels, it's pretty much everything that you want in a photo editor from exposure to contrast, your highlights and shadows, saturation, temperature and tint. And right in this same user experience, you have all of your fade, grain, vignette, sharpness. You even have your split toning at the bottom there, which really puts everything on one screen for you to be able to edit the photo in the way that you want. Now, they aren't necessarily as fine tunable as they are in 
Lightroom, for instance, on the sharpness, you really only have one slider as opposed to like the masking and other things that you have in Lightroom, similar with the grain, noise reduction, things like that. Uh, however, I actually think I prefer how they have the split toning set up. But one thing you'll notice is missing is some of those selective tools like your gradient filters, radial filters, your, your brush tools. Those are missing. So all of your edits are going to be global across the image. You aren't going to be able to isolate any of the settings that you want. One thing I noticed, and I don't know if you're able to tell this through YouTube and everything here, but I was noticing this weird glitching of the image after each edit. So as I'm tweaking a particular setting, you can see that adjustment happening. But when I'm done and it tries to like set itself back, it has this weird little glitch effect that was a little bit distracting. I don't know if that was because I was also recording and doing other things, but it's it's something that I noticed and just wanted to call that out. One thing I loved when I got into the color details is this little bar graph that shows you how much of a certain color you have in an image. So you know that if you go into a certain color and start making changes, is that gonna have a bigger effect on the image or not? This isn't crucial to being a professional photo editor. I think this is something maybe more for an Instagram post or something like that. But I do really like that this border features here, they call it frames. There's all sorts of little settings and colors and things you can do with it. It's nothing amazing, but it being built in for some reason stuck out to me and something I really enjoyed. I will say the export options are a bit limited. You can go into the settings and tweak some of the things a little bit. You have things like your watermarks and metadata and things like that, but it's again, not as robust as Lightroom, but for majority of people, it's probably good enough. Now for the workflow, one thing I really liked about this is I didn't have to import everything into the app itself. When you're scrolling through and picking photos, you're looking directly at your photo camera roll. So that's one less import that I would have to do for my current workflow. That can both save time as well as some organization. Because they're already in albums that I've organized in the Photos app, it's one less thing and kind of keeps them all in one place. So it actually could improve my workflow quite a bit. One thing that Lightroom does not have in their mobile version is batch editing. And that is something that again, for a workflow perspective is huge. So for Darkroom to be able to have that where you can copy those edits and go into batch, select all the photos you wanna apply those edits to and do that in one swoop is a big deal and could save a lot of time, particularly if you're doing like something like a wedding where you want those basic adjustments all kind of set similar so it looks like it's one event and then you don't have to copy and paste on every single photo like you do in Lightroom. Now for Darkroom, in terms of price, they have a couple of options. They have a $4 a month option, a $20 a year option, and then a $50 one-time fee. So what's nice about that is it's flexible and it puts it in your consumer hand of, do you wanna be on a subscription model? Do you wanna save a little bit money by paying for a year up front? Or do you wanna just be one and done? Pay the 50 bucks and be done with it. It's really up to you. Which for $20 for a year, that saves $100 a year compared to Lightroom. So looking at it holistically with the user experience, workflow, features, pricing, let's give Darkroom a gold star. All right, let's jump into Pixelmator Photo. Right when you import, it does look pretty clean but I have to say that I end up hating this user experience. This is by far my least favorite. Again, right when you open up the app, it does that photo does take up a lot of the screen real estate and the menu options are clean and up in the corner, but once you get into it and start opening up some of those editing features, it really gets cluttered. And that's because there are presets at the bottom that you can't hide and then the different sections within the basic functionality, the basic editing panels, have the option of turning them on or off, but they're always there. And you end up having a bunch of little blue dots that are distracting. It feels like the Android approach to design where you wanna give the user a lot of customizability, but it ends up being a little bit cluttered instead of 
being clean and just having things where they should be. I also noticed a lot of redundancy. For instance, you would expect some of the presets to be things like black and white, but then you have a whole black and white section in your basic panels. You also have sepia as a standalone panel as opposed to a preset. And then the way you adjust colors has like three or four different options. And so the user experience ends up being really confusing. You could in theory get used to this and design it and organize it to be how you want it to be. But for me, it just was too much and too many options for not the right type of user experience. Now in terms of the editing tools that it has, it has all of your basic tools like your exposure, contrast, colors, temperatures, all of those things. It does have a healing tool that works really well, but again, it doesn't have those selective editing tools like your gradient filters, brush tools, things like that in Lightroom. So not really taking advantage of the pencil that you have with the iPad because it's just a bunch of sliders as opposed to interacting with the image itself. Now in terms of workflow, this one was a little confusing to me. Again, you're not having to import the photos to the app itself, but there's this done button up in the right hand corner that kept tripping me up. So if you were to click that, it asks you if you want to modify the photo as opposed to exporting. And it felt like when I was maybe done with a certain setting, I wanted to click done and maybe go back to the general view of it, see where I'm at, but it just wanted to exit out and modify the photo that was actually saved in the camera roll. But instead you actually have to go to a separate export option that in really kind of avoid that done button from the beginning. And then the export options are even more limited than Darkroom. So Lightroom has the most robust export options Darkroom has most of the things that you're gonna want as a normal user. There's very few things that you're gonna be missing. But when you get to Pixelmator Photo, you really just are gonna have export and a quality adjustment. But with all of that said, it sounds like I don't like this one. I do see its functionality, and I think for somebody who is trying to figure out their editing style, this could be a good option because it has so many options. You can try different things, see what works, see what doesn't. For somebody who has a editing style already figured out, this probably isn't the best tool. And all of that is reflected in its price. So this is a one-time purchase of $5. So you aren't having to deal with subscriptions. So for half of one month of Lightroom, you're going to get this app completely all yours forever no subscriptions or anything. So the cost is definitely the lowest of these apps, but for me, the, in terms of the value and what you're looking at, it definitely shows. So in terms of rating, let's give this one a thumbs up. So let's look at Lightroom. This is the one that is what I know. So like I said earlier, I started editing and learned editing through Adobe Lightroom on a desktop. And so moving to Lightroom Mobile on the iPad was really easy. It has the tools where I expect them. It has them titled the things that I expect them to be. And they have the effect on the image that I expect it to have. But with that said, the user experience is a bit cluttered. You'll see that it has a pretty big bar at the top that pushes the image down a little bit and really isn't taking advantage of the full screen of the iPad. Now, it is clean in terms of what's on the left and the bottom. You can pull up a photo scroll at the bottom that to navigate a little bit, but again, that takes up a little bit more real estate. But when you do look at the tools on the right-hand side, I, I do think they are clean. I think they're organized well. Again, this is probably because it's what I learned on, and so they are as I expect them to be. In terms of the editing tools, this is where you have the most robust editing features. You have all of your basics from exposure to contrast and highlights and all of those things, as well as the other things I've been talking about with the other apps that they don't have in terms of the gradient filters, radio filters, brush tools that really let you fine tune an image and get in and edit something very specific that may not need to impact the entire image. So again, the example being that this sky, you may wanna tweak that a little bit because I did a split tone edit on this, it added quite a bit of purple into the clouds that I didn't really want. 
So I wanted to pull that back, but only out of the sky. So I was able to do that by adding a gradient filter to the sky. So to me, those selective editing tools are the biggest differentiator for Lightroom over the other apps. Adobe continues to add features and improve its functionality and bring some of the desktop class features of Lightroom over to the mobile version. And one of those is its interface with Photoshop. Photoshop for the iPad is still pretty rudimentary. They're working on it and it's being improved, but the seamless integration of being able to export a photo into Photoshop from Lightroom, make some edits and bring it back has recently been rolled out and is pretty impressive. So that then does get into the layering of the layered type of edits and something like that compared to Affinity Photo, which we're not looking at. It's just that added functionality and that taking it to the next level that really makes it worth it for me. In terms of cost, Adobe has a photography plan that is $10 a month. You get Lightroom both on the iPad, desktop, and Photoshop on desktop and iPad. And all of that is $10 a month. So that is definitely the most expensive. It ends up being $120 a year to have this app. So unless you are a professional photographer and you need that functionality, it's probably not worth it. I would probably recommend going with the $20 a year option with Darkroom. If you do really want those selective editing tools, Lightroom is going to be your best bet. So thinking about everything that we just looked at, I'm going to give Lightroom 10 points. Now to compare the ratings of these different apps, check the conversion chart in the back. So there you go. That is it. Obviously there is a lot to choose from. They have the pros and cons. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. But remember, no matter what app you're using, no matter what gear you're using, just get started.